This is my 750 horsepower SQ5. And today, we're gonna get it from sounding like a race car to an F1 car. We're gonna install an exhaust that I actually got in the mail. Let me show you guys what I got. Before we unbox anything, let's talk about my current exhaust setup. PTEA 10 turbo, definitely a beast of a turbo. This turbo is very, very loud. Also, I'm running the CTS Catalyst downpipe right here. What that does is, uh, well, it opens up the exhaust. I don't know if it makes any more power over a high flow cat setup, but it definitely sounds really good. Going back forward, the rest of the exhaust is stock, including the baby resonators, the center resonator, and also the rear muffler. The problem with my car right now is the fact that I don't have any exhaust tips. <laughs> This is absolutely fake. I mean, they just got plastic inserts. And then if you look underneath, all it is is downturn. So Bruh. essentially, I don't have any exhaust tip. I don't mind it at all. I think the rear end actually looks pretty clean with just this diffuser setup. <laughs> Greatest thing about this car is, dude, I can do like 2.9, 2.8 seconds, zero to 60 on the street with baby stuff on the back. Like, I, I literally have a car seat right there. Like, for a uh, for a Catalyst downpipe and a stock exhaust, like, this thing sounds insane. Oh my goodness. I wonder how much louder this car will be with the IE exhaust. It's like, it's, it's fairly loud already. Let's talk about the exhaust noise in the car. Now, currently, like I said, I have the Catalyst downpipe from CTS. The rest of the stock exhaust um, is, well, stock. Right now, there is a little bit of drone in the back, especially at the lower RPM, and I'm gonna try to recreate that here the best that I can. It's, there's a little bit of a drone, I guess, but it's honestly not that bad. For me personally, I definitely want more, meaning I want more turbo noise. <laughs> I want some more of a cleaner sound and not just kind of a, a raspy growl. My current exhaust setup, I absolutely love it. It sounds really good from the inside and the outside. And there's not too much drone, like I said. Uh, there's no extra vibrations going through the car. After having the setup ever since I bought this car and it went stage two and I've been stage two, I've enjoyed this exhaust setup. And I think it's time that I change it up. I definitely want that, like I said, more turbo noise because, well, who can complain about turbo noise, right? <laughs> <laughs> Integrate Engineering reached out to me and said, hey Dave, we have an exhaust system in the works. And I said, well, let me try it because I actually want to change it up. Now, let me show you guys what the Integrate Engineering exhaust looks like. I'm already just like shaking from excitement. This is probably some of the coolest stuff I've seen and especially the fact that it's for the SQ5 is what makes it even more exciting. Look at the welds on it. That is so beautiful. Probably like the heaviest part of everything is just the resonator. I'm gonna guess it's around 20, 25 pounds.
I definitely want to get a little bit more noise out of it and definitely a lot more turbo spool. So let's get to installing this exhaust. After the exhaust installation, I'll be taking my wife on a ride. So make sure you watch all the way until the end to find out her reaction to it. We'll also get into some more insane boosted launches. So stay tuned for that. Once I had the SQ5 parked in the garage, the next step was to raise the car and position it on jack stands at each corner to create ample working space underneath the car. With the car now elevated, I unpacked the IE exhaust system from its box and started to mock it up. Take a look at this stunning exhaust system. Let's talk about this IE SQ5 exhaust. So it is actually a true cat back, meaning that includes the mid pipe, center resonator, and also the muffler delete. It's the entire exhaust besides the actual down pipe itself. It's made out of T304 stainless steels. It's definitely gonna withstand the test of time. I'd like to show you guys these welds right here. This is honestly a very high quality exhaust. I was pretty surprised when it first showed up. And as we can see, we have some extra actually reinforcement on the hangers right here. From the down pipe, we have the center resonator. Again, guys, these welds are just so beautiful. The exhaust itself obviously showed up with no scratches, no issues, and it looks so good. The thing about this resonator is that uh, this actually is part of Integra Engineering's brand new drone tap technology, and I'll tell you guys a little bit more about that in a second here. Moving back forward, they're deleting the rear muffler. Later on, you guys will see on this side, on the stock muffler pipe, actually a valve that sits there, it goes out. And so the funny part about that is that Audi decided to only have one valve on on the right side and no valve on the left side, which is super weird. So it only opens up in dynamic mode. And I think it was a, a great idea that Integrated Engineering actually removed it. I'm actually super excited to hear how this exhaust sounds like. So let's get right into installing it, guys. Now that we have the hood open, the downpipe is fairly hot. So I think that we're gonna get to these bolts last, but there's three bolts right there on that side and three bolts on that side. Obviously this downpipe is upgraded. So it's just a bolt and a nut makes it a little bit easier, I think, than having just Duds. We're gonna spray it with some PP blaster that's hopefully gonna loosen them up and uh, make them really easy to remove. So here is the rear muffler. I think we're gonna start by dropping that first. That way we can give some time for that downpipe to cool down. There's one 13 millimeter right here and one 13 millimeter right there. After we loosen those, we'll start removing these exhaust clamps right here and also those exhaust clamps. Moving back further, we have these OEM baby resonators. And I don't know if you can see it up in there, but there's my JXB drive shaft mount. Uh, no movement in the drive shaft. Thank you, JXB. And here's the transmission. Definitely gonna do transmission service soon. Easier to do on a lift than on jack stand. Here are the exhaust hangers for the for the mid pipes themselves. And so we're gonna pop these off too right here. Look at that, 034 insert, very nice. These are mid pipes connected to the down pipe up there. And that's about it. So let's get started on this. 12. Bro. Hey! <laughs> but it falls out on the bottom, bro! All right, let's see get these bolts off or what? I mean, they're still oh, hot. Dude. Impact rated uh, setup right there. Very nice. Impact away, sir. All right, we have a better setup, a Makita. I, I don't think we have a better setup. <laughs> I think it's better, I don't know. Prove me wrong. Uh, oh, can't break them, so PP Blaster it is, and then give them some time. PP Blaster does miracles, so oh, yeah. it should be fine. All right, well, rear muffler it is. Are you stuck? No. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Okay, there's the first exhaust section. There we go. Weight reduction, boy. Weight reduction. We cracked each nut loose one by one. This was definitely a get it done by all means necessary kind of situation for us. Take a look at this first brass bolt we took out that almost tripped out on us. Cole, how did you and I install this downpipe? Like, it took us like an hour to do it. Here's what happened. 
This one is stripped. That one is loose, but this one is a goner. We're gonna try something here. We have a little belt sander and also a little grinder. And these were actually brand new ones. And we put anti-seize on, on them when I was installing this downpipe and they still were like impossible to get off and sadly, obviously stripped. We have a different solution to the problem. This awesome little belt sander made quick work of the bowl and the nut itself. And before I knew it, it was out of the way. All the bolts are out. So now all we have to do, there's two triple squares right here and two triple squares on this side. And that's all that's holding these mid pipes in place. So let's get them off. Hey, there you go. She's out. Let's get the other side out. There you go. Now that we have the OEM exhaust off, I just wanted to compare the OEM exhaust to IE's exhaust. Obviously, we already talked about the build quality on those. Uh, I think that those pipes, not having all this heat shielding is definitely gonna help the cause, making it easier to install them. Flex pipe also on these mid pipes likes to break. This is actually kind of an upgrade. Baby resonators get removed. Initially, I said that I had the stock exhaust, which I did but I did forget that I actually had this ECS tuning resonator delete. So I brought my stock one right here, a little bit more noise on the stock cat. But if you're catless and you're running this resonator delete, a lot of drone, a lot of drone. That's where that comes in right there. So since I am catless, Integra Engineering's drone tap technology should eliminate all drone and maximize turbo noise. Obviously this big, big muffler finally gets deleted. We don't need it, ton of weight. These pipes are very light compared to this heavy muffler. The one downside is that I actually forgot a weight scale and I don't wanna just throw approximate weights at you guys. If you take a look at the IE exhaust, these are actually very light from, o from, from the factory. This resonator is pretty heavy obviously, but the OEM one is the same weight. The actual weight difference, I believe, is between the muffler and these pipes right here. So since you're deleting the rear muffler, that's gonna help you save some weight in the back, which I think will be huge. Also, if you take a look, look how restrictive these are. I mean, maybe it doesn't matter that much, but these are just straight open. It's open all the way through, all the way to the end. The exhaust clamps are now on. These ones are on, that one is on, and then also these two rear ones are on. There's one more exhaust clamp, but it's on the, it's like secured to the subframe. So you just gotta loop that one up and then uh, stick this on. So we're gonna go a piece at a time. I think start with the mid pipes and then get the center, center resonator installed and then we'll do the rears. So there's a couple more pieces that come from Inter Engineering. I think they give you a couple more clamps, a couple of reducers. I believe this is if you wanna retain something that's stock. Obviously new gaskets for the downpipe. These are the new bolts that connect, that connect this bracket to the actual transmission. And then these are four spacers and I'll show you guys where those go exactly. And also a couple of zip ties for the exhaust valve connection that's hanging. Those downpipe bolts suck. They were tough. All that matters is that they're off now and we got brand new hardware. Initially, when I installed this downpipe, got these bolts right here from CTS and then they also give you brand new nuts and we stripped half of them. I just recommend that you throw away your brass nuts and instead of getting new brass nuts, get these right here. Obviously the same thread pitch and they're gonna seal really nicely. We're just gonna add anti-seize to these bolts right here to make sure that they never seize up again in case we have to take that off again and also these should not have the same issues as these do with stripping we have that hanger temporarily supported we have this hanger supported and then don't forget to use the zip ties that integer engineering supplies to zip tie this little connector off so that way it's not wobbling around and doesn't tear off in case you ever want to put your stock exhaust back on i'd like to show you guys what the spaces are for right here they're gonna sit between the frame, just like that. The exhaust hangs, I believe, a little bit lower, obviously, than the stock one. They put this cross race member just a little bit lower, so that way there's more space for the exhaust and it doesn't hit this and doesn't rattle. Thankfully, Integra Engineering was smart and decided not to make these one long big piece, but actually split these mid pipes up into two sections and that makes your life a lot easier. And the passenger side does have a little bit less space than the driver's side. As far as it goes, you just stick the mid pipe up and uh, like I said, Cole caught it for me. And the only thing that you have to do after that, before you tighten up the mid pipe to the down pipe is secure this little bracket and the bracket on the mid pipe with the new bolts that Integrate Engineering provides. So make sure you do that. 
I just have these temporarily, just temporarily secured and uh, just to have some play. Same thing on this side, and that should give you some wiggle room to play with the exhaust before you secure anything at all. Once Cole has these downpipe bolts secured, we'll get down to installing the last two sections of the midpipe. We finished up by securing all the clamps on the exhaust, and now check out the finished product. First cold start on this brand new IE exhaust. Let's hear how it sounds like. I haven't actually tried a cold start yet, so we're gonna find out how loud this thing really is. I wake up my entire neighborhood. <laughs> has more of a I guess you can say that it's not as raspy as it was before even removing the stock muffler definitely opened up a little bit more turbo noise but the exhaust is also louder so you can't hear the turbo noise as much you can definitely hear it spooling there's a little bit of drone right there and then that goes away obviously as I'm trying to film this video for you guys I'm driving and all of a sudden I hear this and uh, well that fell off that's embarrassing well this is uh, kind of embarrassing guys I've never had this happen to me before the exhaust is a little damaged but it's kind of no big deal what I need to do is go back home fix up this little edge right here and uh, put this back on right now definitely worried about any more damage on this chipping right here on the corner and a little bit of grinding that happened here when I was driving and it was dragging on the asphalt but no big deal I figure if I take just a little bit of sandpaper to the edge of this and clean it up inside right here and maybe clean up this little chip we're gonna get back under the car reinstall this and double check every single exhaust clamp because I don't want my $1,600 exhaust system to fall off on the freeway ever again What I found out is that these two pipes right here, this one right here and this one right here, were too far out. And the clamps were loose here. There you go. And also they were loose here. So the entire exhaust moved back a little bit and uh, kind of went into my bumper, which is no big deal. I really don't care about that. But as a little lesson for you guys not to make the same mistake, make sure your clamps are very tight and make sure that your exhaust system is actually adjusted properly because these pipes are not supposed to be touching the bumper. The exhaust is made to fit perfect, just like OEM. And here's, here's me after I readjusted this pipe, and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. <laughs> that is just menacing. <laughs> oh my goodness. 
We're also gonna try a launch and see how much louder the turbo is. On the exterior of the car, the turbo spool is way louder. And that is obvious because you open up more flow for the turbo. <laughs> Well, this is actually faster, I can't prove it, <laughs> but it does feel amazing and I think because there's now a little bit more turbo sound, there's definitely a lot more emotion. <laughs> Did my zero to 60 performance increase? Did my quarter mile performance increase? I am honestly not sure. The car feels faster because it's louder and therefore that's a placebo effect. The exhaust definitely gave it more of a sporty, deep, deeper sound. If you guys heard that rumble, it's definitely got a crazy rumble to it now than it did before. The exhaust is louder, which is obviously what I wanted. Now, Integra Engineering did warn me that this exhaust would be very loud paired up with the Catalyst downpipe. If you install this exhaust, most likely your wife is driving the car or you will be driving your wife in the car. And as you can see, there's a baby seat in the back. So this exhaust is definitely baby approved. Now let's get my wife into the car and find out what she thinks about it. I'm guessing that the drone does bother you, however, right? And that's the drone that I was talking about around 2,500 RPM. However, that drone does go away at the higher RPMs, so the car gets kind of quieter. I guess it, it's a weird offset, which is kind of interesting, so I'm not sure if you're ever revving the car out. I think I reached those higher RPMs. I, I guess we just have to teach you how to drive the race car, huh? Another, another great thing about this exhaust, guys, is uh, <laughs> it's basic. It's white noise for your baby. It's a great hum, and they fall asleep to it. So at least my little guy does. There it is, guys. That's exactly what the IE exhaust sounds like. It is absolutely insane how loud it is, but at the same time, I honestly kind of love it. And if you guys think the exhaust sounds good, I hope you guys don't hesitate. Go to the link in the description below and buy yourself an Integrate Engineering exhaust for your SQ5. If you haven't yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button on your way out and I'll see you guys in the next one.